So this is a very long question. Um, so I'm going to call it a translate word problem question. And the way that I answer these questions is to not get overwhelmed by how long it is. Instead, I read one sentence at a time, and I make sure that I understood that sentence, that I write down any quantitative information from that sentence before moving on to the next sentence. So let's, go, let's do this one together. The first sentence says Misha and Rana each selected a random sample of students at their school and asked how many soft drink servings each student had consumed the previous week. Okay, so I understand that's the setup for um, their sample of students that they're polling, nothing to write down. The next sentence, Misha estimated that the mean number of soft drink servings was 7.1. So that's Misha's estimate. So I'm going to say M equals 7.1 for the mean. I'll say mean. Okay. With an associated margin of error of 1.2. So that means plus or minus 1.2. That's my margin of error. So the mean could be 1.2 higher than 7.1. It could be 1.2 lower than 7.1. That's what margin of error means. So this is mean plus minus ME for margin of error. Okay, Rana estimated that the mean number of soft drink servings was 8.3. So R for Rana was 8.3 with an associated margin of error of 0 0.8. So plus or minus 0 0.8. So notice how I'm writing and reading at the same time, making sure I understand before moving on. The next sentence says, assuming the margins of error were calculated in the same way, which of the following best explains why Rana obtained a smaller margin of error than Misha? Okay, so then all this comes down to how do you get smaller margins of error, which means how do you get more reliable data, right? A smaller margin of error means that the mean that you calculated is more reliable. So let's see what the answers say. So choice A, Rana's sample contained more students than Misha's sample contained. Well, let's see. The question says Misha and Rana each selected a random sample of students. Oh, so it doesn't tell us how many. So yeah, that could be it, right? Rana could have just asked more students, in which case you get a better sense of reality or what the real data is by talking to more people. So I like that answer. Choice B, Rana's sample contained more students who drink soft drinks than Misha's sample contained. Okay, so that shouldn't affect the margin of error. That would actually affect the whole experiment, right? So if it wasn't really random and Rana ended up talking to students who just more or more likely to drink soft drinks, maybe she talked to them while they were in line to buy soft drinks or something like that, um, that, would, that would impact the entire experiment, but it wouldn't necessarily impact just the margin of error alone. So I'm going to get rid of choice B. Choice C, Rana's sample contained more students who drank exactly seven soft drink servings than Misha's sample contained. That's too specific. Again, this is supposed to be very randomized. And again, choice C has nothing to do with margin of error. Um, in fact, it would impact the margin of error, but it also would impact the overall experiment, right? So choice B and C for the same reasons are not good because it just completely eliminates the idea of a random sample. Choice D, Rana's sample contained more students who drank exactly eight soft drink servings than Misha's sample contained. So same reason as B and C, D is gone. We want it to be random. We're assuming it's random. Um, we're assuming that they're doing, the, you know, their, their methods are exactly the same. So we can't say that B, C, or D are correct, although they could have been, but we don't have that data. But if everything was random as said, and Rana's sample contained more students, then that definitely would impact the margin of error. So choice A is the correct answer here.